My dad used to be the scum off of someone's shoe before the lottery. New millionaires are born every day. I had told my boss I'm going to win a million dollars tonight. By betting big and beating the odds. I won $10 million in jackpots. Welcome to my world. And in some cases, getting a new lease on life. My playtime was interfering with work time. Oh. <laughs> from Fawn Fines. So uh, the one thing we do have from the old house is this really nice toilet. Yep. To brand new baubles. I'm definitely ready to propose to Delaney. I want to ask you if you'll marry me. Yes, no. To cold, hard cash. It's 1800 my friend. Are you sure? Four remarkable stories, four incredible transformations. Nothing but the best for the fix. Breakfast is served for the Breakfast of Champions. The reason why we're the champions, well, we're the Fix. Meet father and son duo Jeff and Leroy Fick of Auburn, well, Michigan. You trust me, you know, I had anybody in the world, you trust me. In the spring of 2010, Dad Leroy hit it big playing the Michigan Lottery. My name is Leroy Fick, and I won $2 million in the Michigan State Lottery. Leroy's $2 million win started with a mere $20 scratch-off ticket. When I play the lottery, I usually play the $20 scratch-off tickets when I could afford it. I took the card and scratched it off covertly and told the girl behind the counter, I think I just won $1,000, and she goes, no, you didn't. And I goes, yeah, I think I did. And she looks at the card, and she goes, yeah, you did. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Even cooler was when Leroy found out that this $1,000 win made him eligible for a $2 million drawing. I had no idea that I was ever going to win $2 million. I was thrilled about the chance of being able to win that kind of money. With only five people eligible for the drawing, Leroy beat the odds and walked away with the grand prize, $2 million. The moment that I won, it was really thrilling. My dad used to be the scum off of someone's shoe before the lottery. Rock on, Dad! Pancakes are almost ready. And now he is a shining diamond among all of the rough. Before the windfall, Leroy was living hand to mouth, even using food stamps to buy groceries. It sure is nice to be able to pay for this in cash without using the damn food stamp cards anymore. Life for me, before I won the lottery, was very hard. I didn't have much of anything, really. My dad used to drive around and pick up cans off the side of the road, because in Michigan, you get a 10 cent deposit for every can that you turn back in. Before I won the lottery, it was that bad, yes. It meant a lot to me just to win the $1,000. The fact that I won the $2 million, it was just great. It was unbelievable. After taxes, Leroy walked away with a little under a million dollars. Since winning the money, my life has improved 100%. With his winnings, Leroy's first order of business was to demolish his old home and rebuild a brand new one on the exact same spot. And this new house allows a room for Leroy's son, Jeff. This one turns it on high. Okay. Whoa! And this turns the light on and off. Wow, man, who has that? Nobody has that except for the fix. But even with his newfound wealth, Leroy still hangs on to some of his old habits. This is my room right here, yeah. It's a little messy, but... <laughs> well, you know, it's lived in. It's not messy, it's lived in. Since the win, Leroy has become Jeff's pet project. His mission? To make over his dad into Michigan's most eligible millionaire bachelor. My dad is the most important person in my life, and I now have a career with him knowing that I have to be his personal assistant, his financial advisor, spokesperson, and he needs me to do these things because my dad is not able to do them on his own. Any, anything I tell you, if it detriments you, it detriments me. I'm not gonna have that. We are the Batman and Robin of uh, father and son teams. My son, Jeff, is 32. I'm 31 years old and I'm retired. He's fun to hang around with. I like them. You got these fireworks over here, man. Let me ask you this. You, you're, you're trying to get certified for this, right? You want to be a professional pyrotician, correct? You got it. I'm a member of two pyrotechnic guilds. Where in the world does a person get skyrockets like that? I've never even seen bottle rockets like that, man. The Indians in Mount Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> also explosive are the new toys in the Fick House. 
You got a 65-inch 3D television right here. Tom Cruise doesn't even have a, a TV as good as this in his house. Again, top of the line. Yeah, absolute top of the line. You can't get any better than that. You got a Bose surround sound system. That's the top of the line. You can't get nothing better than That's that. That's what I was told. This was advice well taken also, because I advised you to get the PS3. Yeah. Because this is the only system you can get that's in 3D. Right. This is an investment that is going to last you your life. It should last for a long time, yeah. Your entire, yeah. your life and my life. Even just watching this for one day, for one hour, it's pay, it's, it, it paid for itself. But even with a tricked out entertainment system, there's plenty of room for improvement in the thick household. You could also get some motion sensors put in your shower. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. Step right in, motion sensor comes on, boom. I'm waiting for the one that Justin's had in the cartoon where you just walk in and the machine does it everything. <laughs> I, I, I think we can make a masterpiece down here, man. This thing could be the best basement ever built. That would be cool. I'd like yeah. to see, I'd like to see black lights and black light posters all the way through this hallway. Billiard table, hot tub, jacuzzi, disco ball with disco lights somewhere. Yeah. Black lights everywhere. Yeah. We're the best. We gotta have the best. Yeah. Champions. But Leroy kept one thing from the former house to remind him of his roots. This is the toilet that was in our old house. Oh, the wow. It was torn down. The one thing we do have from the old house is this really nice toilet. Yep. That is awesome, man. I We're going to definitely use this, man. We may even pass that down to generations. When you look at that, you think, hey, that's where I came from. <laughs> I came from a shack to living in. Exactly. Playboy Mansion. Right. Know? Since I won, I couldn't be happier. It's just, uh, it's just incredible. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. Leroy discovered that one of the benefits of being a high-rolling bachelor is being able to ride your own wave of success, or in his case, his seated lawnmower. This lawnmower I paid $3,600 for. I love it a lot. It gets the job done really quick. It makes it a lot of fun to do. From tearing up the lawn to ripping up the road, Leroy's winnings are allowing him to start up his own fleet of vehicles. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to Graf Chevrolet. I've always wanted a sports car, just for the power, the looks of it, chick magnet. Ever driven sports cars before? Nope, this is the first one. Really? Yep. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised, Leroy. Wow. Do you have anything in another color? OK. So how do you like the looks of this one? I want it. Here's your keys. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. It's OK. Slow, slow, slow. In true bachelor fashion, Leroy drives off the lot with his cherry red chick magnet, only to meet son Jeff for a shopping spree. Man, that's a beautiful car, man. Lord have mercy. Feel like going shopping? Oh, hell yeah. This is where all the cool stuff is now. All the stuff I've been getting that's cool. Yeah. They got it all in right, all right here, man. OK, let's do it. We're at the Gold Tree Pawn Shop here in Bay City, Michigan, and we're here to shop. We're here to spend some money. That's a nice one, Dad. Yeah, I know. Do you know what year make that is? Yeah, I want to yeah. see the early yeah. 70s yeah. on that one. Yeah, you want that one, Dad. Every single item I buy is a potential money-making item. One thing in particular I would love to get is this uh, sword you have right here. I'm a collector of very fine items, and now that my dad won the lottery, I have the funds to do it. anything I want to do whenever I want to do it. The sword. Sword this the is stone. Excalibur right yeah, here. Yeah, the sword This the is stone. Excalibur right here. When I see dollar signs in my head, that's when I buy. Want can you get this one for me? I don't want the Jeep. This is not, can you get this one for me? This is the most expensive one they yeah, have. That's the Jackson Ward. This is the best one they have. Man. You like that one? I yeah, love yeah, this one. Sorry. We can start a band with this stuff, All man. Right, we'll take these two. Awesome, man. I plan on opening my own business very soon. I have an entrepreneur mindset, and I have an entrepreneur uh, mind frame. I'm buying camcorders, I'm buying swords, I'm buying guns. I'll take this too. I'm buying jewelry, I'm buying slot machines, all kind of all stuff, right. man. All right, Jeff, we're at about $6,125. Hey, Dad, are you cool with that? That's yeah. a good price for everything we got, right? Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Hey, let's rock and roll. Don't forget the slot yeah. machine. No, slot machine's already in there. I got you. Money well spent. Coming up, a lesson in millionaire etiquette. If I were trying to get smashed, yeah, I would drink. 
and later... Pull your pants up while I'm talking to you. The Slot Guru tells all. The Slot Guru is not meant to take, but he's meant to give. The 17th Annual Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards. Honoring Danielle... I'm gonna lie for your friends. And no gap. I think it's a shame. More comfortable sharing things. What? We have what you... Tell all. It all starts... At the second thing in particular... In the spring of 2010, Leroy Thick hit the $2 million jackpot, turning him into Auburn, Michigan's hottest millionaire bachelor. One thing in particular I would love to get is this uh, sword you have right here. With his winnings, Leroy is funding son Jeff's new business as a collectibles dealer, which he houses at a local motel for safekeeping. All right. Room 240 at the Saginaw uh, Econo Lodge, under lock and key at all times. Jersey collection, over $1,000 worth of jersey collection to start my collectibles with. Sneakers, I am an avid sneaker collector. I have over $700 worth of sneakers here. Very nice throw blanket I bought right there. This is where all the cool stuff is. I love all of these swords, but my particular favorite out of all of them, uh, this one here. That thing right there could be used by a pirate or something. I mean, this thing is cool. I really like this. I love making money. Most people do. And I will most certainly make money off of everything I have here. After a hard workout with some sword play, nothing better than hopping in a nice fresh jacuzzi. This is the top of the line right here. This is what makes this room what it is. Nothing but the best for the fix. $80 a night. Doesn't get any better than this. From hot tubs to hot cuisine, Jeff winds up a private lesson in etiquette for himself and his most eligible bachelor dad at a five-star restaurant in downtown Detroit. We've come in here today in hopes of uh, learning how to conduct ourselves in a five-star restaurant because since my dad has won the lottery, we're going to need to know how to do this because we're going to be in five-star restaurants from here on out if it's up to us. Proper etiquette for bread and butter is to actually pass it around and to put your butter on your plate like that, that you'll be using for your bread. I hope that they take some new tips and insight on how to go out and enjoy themselves in a restaurant. What I hope to learn today is how to conduct myself in the correct, proper way in a restaurant and try to set a good example for my son. And now this is just regular plain butter, it's not cinnamon it's, butter or anything like that? It's regular butter, it's whipped though, so it's easier to spread on your bread. Now what's the difference in these two breads here? Well this one here is just a, just a classic farmhouse loaf. And then this one is a, a, a whole grain bread. So it's got lots of uh, grains. So and this is white bread seeds. and that's wheat bread. Basically, more or less. yeah. All right, I just love you, 2008. What he's doing here is he's presenting me the label of right. this wine. I'm going to taste it and, and smell, smell it and make it. sure yeah. that it's OK. Oh, I've seen that on television. It. It smells like fruit. That's a good sign. Always it doesn't good. smell like, doesn't uh, smell like rotten grandma's fruit. dirty basement. <laughs> I've never experienced anything like this. No, I have never in my either. life. Close to it, but not quite. Tell me if this man right here is not the most eligible bachelor in America. This man has a 2011 Camaro SS. He has a brand new $170,000 house paid for. I believe this man is the most eligible and single bachelor in the world, in the United States, and I believe he should have his own chance at The Bachelor Show. My dad's such a charismatic, charismatic character. Women fall in love just looking at my dad. Would you want to do a show like that where girls girls competed for your love and attention? That'd be wonderful. <laughs> that'd be nice. That'd be a nice show, right? Oh, that'd be great. I know, right? Did you try your wine? What did you think of it? The taste to me is not something that's appetizing. I maybe I haven't acquired that taste yet. Yeah. If I were trying to get smashed, yeah, I would drink. It. Are you left-handed then? No. They just happen to be going over this way. <laughs> I'm ambidextrous, so I can okay. use both either way. I could drink both of these at the same time if I wanted to. I mean, really. <laughs> I would say, without a doubt, this has been at the top five leaderboard of FIC experiences. 
for now. Well, I really enjoyed their uh, their genuineness in, in meeting them and, and how passionate they were about what they're going to do with their future at this point. Their aspirations are, are very lofty, and I think that they learned a lot from tonight. Hey, Dad, I hope you're paying attention here, because when you're on The Bachelor later on, you're going to need all this etiquette. Thanks to the lottery affecting our lives, I'm going to be doing this on a daily basis, and that's what I hope for. What do you think? I, I, that'd be great. I think that would be wonderful. Coming up. When you get an expensive car, your tushy feel different on the leather seats. Detroit's very own Casino Casanova. All of them hit. A smart person to listen to a winner. That's just how I feel. Or a lower. Do we know what? It's back and you can earn times two. is Ernest Cobb, also known as the Slot Guru. I've won $10 million in jackpots. Welcome to my world. My name is Ernest Cobb, and I'm a professional slot player. I play slots for a living, and I'm actually addicted to giving. Michigan man Ernest Cobb is addicted to giving and winning. He plays the slots as a full-time job. I've been playing slots for six years, and I've won over $10.3 million. This millionaire has spent almost $3 million on slots to make his $10 million fortune. But it wasn't always this way. This is where I'm from, Detroit. And I'm so happy and thankful that I was able to make it out of Detroit. This is very indicative of my neighborhood. Broken windows, ceilings caved in, broken lives. The drugs hit the scene very hard then. Crack and, you know, dope and all that kind of stuff. This is where I came from. And everybody that used to tease me of being a mama's boy, well, they're either in jail, dead, or hooked on drugs now. At age 20, Ernest joined the Army. Stationed in Germany, he was introduced to his first slot machine. In Germany, they had slot machines, and every time I walk up to a slot machine, I would hit $40, $50, take the money, and I'll go. Ernest was hooked, and once he got back to the States, he started hitting the casinos regularly with his mom. As my mom would go, I would go with her. I started playing more slots. I found out that I made over $40,000 or $50,000 in one night, and I just started playing slots for a living. Ernest calls himself the slot guru a name synonymous with his passion for winning and ultimately giving it away. This is my BMW 750. This is what I've done with the slots. $125,000 car, paid for in the night. Ernest has also given himself a new suburban life. In his very own home, he rents for $2,300 a month. I think when they see me coming with that car is that that's the slot guru. And others think that I'm crazy. When it's all said and done, the slot guru is not meant to take, that he's meant to give. Most people go into casinos thinking about just hitting for themselves. I go into the casino wanting to hit just to give people. My friend, I want to just give you something because I've been winning all day. Good luck, buddy. Thank you very much. And good luck. When I give money away, it's an unbelievable rush. Have a good one. You as well, man. You as well. The rush that I feel when I give money away is probably equivalent to a person hitting a two or three hundred million dollars. That's the rush I feel when I give away five or ten dollars. I tingle all over. And Ernest wants to share that tingly feeling with anyone who wants to know. He's written a book sharing his secrets. Hey, how's everything going, my brother? I wrote a book called Secrets to Hitting More Jackpots. It has a lot to do with karma and the things I do outside the casino dictate my fate inside the casino. Never argue over a machine with anyone. If they want the machine, just give it to them. It's all good. You can hit on any one of them. It's all about timing. I'm not going to tell you you're going to go in the casino and win all the time. I'm not going to tell you that you can be able to look at a slot machine and be able to tell if it's ready to hit. Really, karma is the major role in playing slots. And I honestly think that's one of my main assets to hitting those jackpots. My book instructs you on how I did it. The smart person to listen to a winner. That's just how I feel. <laughs> Ernest breaks it down, guru style. I have one of many methods when I gamble. 
When you first walk into the casino, you have to be alert, attentiveness. Thanks, military. One of the main things when you're coming into the casino, you have to want to win. When it's all said and done, my method is to go in there and play the slots that I feel as though are going to hit. I use what I call the SPEC method. It stands for select, project, expect, and collect. I select the machine that I want, then I project it. I, the slot guru, look at the machine and say, okay, I want $20,000, $30,000 out of this machine. And then the slot guru really believes it. He expects it, just like everybody expects to get paid every week. And then I, the slot guru, collects it. All of them hit. Bottom line, it's all about timing. To put it in a nutshell, if I go to the casino a thousand times, I get ahead at least 950 times. Something about to happen. Yes! Some people take their $50 and they leave. The slot guru take his $50 and go for 100. And then he take his $100 and go 4,000. It's 1,800, my friend. This is what the slot guru do. The best thing that has happened to me since hitting jackpots, the absolute best thing that has ever happened to me is to give the money away. That's the best. This is my ticket. If you take it, it's going to be in your hands, coming from me. Are you sure? Be blessed. It's taking care of people that's not in my family. That's the best. The elderly people, the young people. When young people ask me, well, how did you get that BMW? I don't tell them because I done slung kilos. I told them because I graduated high school and I went to college. Pull your pants up while I'm talking to you. The rush I feel when I give, I have to say it's gotta be a hundredfold greater than when I hit a jackpot. The secret to hitting jackpots, to put it in a nutshell, is to believe, period. Coming up. He said, whatever you do, don't buy a restaurant. An Idaho couple wins a million, but will they blow it all? Sort of like, oops, I messed that <laughs> one up. The 17th Annual Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards, honoring Danielle Brooks, Halle Bailey. So that means be serious and have a team designing something of made in poultry. We are Greg and Front Home Renovation Showdown. We can do this. It's time to sink or swim. Rock the Block, all new Monday night at 9 on HGTV. We are Greg and Kathy Owen. And we won a million dollars in the Idaho raffle, and we bought this restaurant. In 2008, the Owens won a cool million dollars in the Idaho raffle. You could say Kathy had a sixth sense when it came to winning this million dollar jackpot. I had told my boss, I said, I'm not gonna be to work tomorrow because I'm, I'm gonna win a million dollars tonight. So the next morning I called him and I said, I'm, I'm going to Boise to pick up the million dollars I won last night, so I'm not gonna be at work. Well, he started laughing and I said, I'm serious. Now seriously rich, this million dollar windfall is thanks to an ordinary trip to the grocery store. I had sent Greg to the store with a grocery list. And then she gave me a note at the bottom to get two lottery tickets. We won the lottery through a raffle that Idaho State has every year. They sell 250,000 tickets, and the top prize is a million dollars. When we bought the tickets, I was thinking to myself, this is probably the best odds of winning a million dollars because there's only 250,000 tickets sold. When I went to the computer to check the ticket, I saw the number, and I just started like going, oh my gosh, we won, we won, just screaming. And I remember just being so elated and just uh, like a sense of relief. This relief was a long time coming. Our financial situation before we won, we were doing okay, but we, we had built up a lot of debt. Even though Kathy and Greg both had full-time jobs, they still couldn't get ahead of their debt. I was a foreman down at the fish hatchery, and at the time, I was making 32000 a year. And even with Kathy's $50,000 a year salary, the Owens had two decades worth of bills from when their son Gage was born prematurely. Here's when Gage was born. All three pounds. Yeah. I'm ready to spit like right here on my arm. Yep. Our oldest son, Gage, was born premature. And he cost about $130,000 because we didn't have insurance at the time. We had to make monthly payments on him. And it was $25 a month. And it would have taken us 115 years to pay him off. If it weren't for the lottery, Kathy and Greg would have been in debt for the rest of their lives. 
But with their winnings, they paid off the $100,000 in hospital bills and had just enough left to buy a local restaurant as an investment. And it's funny because one of my friends would said, whatever you do, don't buy a restaurant. <laughs> so we're like, oops, we messed that one up. <laughs> Initially, we purchased the building for $117,000, but we put probably $350,000 into it. One of the first things we did was take out the windows, made a deck on this side. The restaurant demanded all of Kathy and Greg's free time. They soon questioned whether they bit off more than they could chew. Our full intention was to continue at our jobs. I quit my job probably six months after we had won. And then I convinced Greg to quit his job to come and help us, so. <laughs> Outfitting the kitchen was by far the biggest surprise we had, that we had no idea that things would cost this much. The biggest part of the kitchen was the hood, which was $35,000, and then all the other equipment combined um, added up to a total of about $100,000. We feature only Idaho wines up here and local wineries here in Beale as well. The Owens are committed to making their restaurant a success, not only for themselves, but for the community. You hear people come in and they're like, Beale needed this so bad, and that just makes you feel good. In fact, the signs are all over the restaurant. The community's been giving back to us by hanging um, dollars up here that are autographed by each person that hangs up a dollar. It is a great reminder of, you know, people that have enjoyed the restaurant. Hey, Dad, can you start some burgers still? Yeah. Son Gage, now a healthy 21-year-old man, helps to manage that one place alongside his parents. Gage is a great contribution to the, to the restaurant. He's a very, very hard worker. By having Gage work there, he's earning his income, but he's also getting an education by working there. I think it's helped him tremendously. The water has changed my life significantly. I basically went from not being able to find a job. My parents purchased this restaurant with their money and have given me an, an opportunity to, to succeed in life. Gage is a full-timer at his parents' restaurant, as is his longtime girlfriend, Delaney. Delaney is very, very intelligent. She's one of the smartest people that I know. She's not like any other girl that I've ever met. She's basically perfect to me. Do you see the new colors we got in on the t-shirts? They're awesome. Um, do you want the kids shirts over there still and the adults right here? Yeah, just make right? sure and separate the kids out from the adults. Gage and I first met when my roommate gave them a place to stay for the night. I met him and it was love at first sight. How's work going? Pretty good. I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason, so Kathy and Greg winning the lottery created a place where all this could happen. After dating long distance for six months, Delaney picked up and moved two hours from Pocatello to Buell, Idaho to be with Gage and to join the Owens in the family business. When my parents were trying to think of a future to use the money towards, they were thinking small restaurant, small restaurant, and, and I said, if we put in a big restaurant, we could definitely succeed here. I could see them franchising the restaurant and just growing this business as much as possible. They've talked to me about them stepping out and me and Delaney taking over. And Gage is ready to go the distance with Delaney on the relationship front as well. We're here to get engagement rings. I'm very proud of him and I'm excited and, and can't wait to see what we pick out. We'll start in this case. Tell me a little bit about her. She's active, she's really smart. Does that look like her style? It's white gold. I'd say probably Probably a little too too much for her. A little too fancy. Yeah. Okay, how about that one? You got three diamonds. You got past, present, future. That's what it represents. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, that's that's definitely the one I want. Very good choice. Very good choice. I'm not sure exactly what made me think that Delaney liked that ring. It just seems like that's the right one. It is an awesome ring. She's going to love it. The idea of me proposing makes me nervous because I don't know what she's going to say. Honestly, I'm scared that she might not say yes. <laughs> so are you excited? Yeah. Are you going to be able to keep it a secret? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Coming up, a millionaire's proposal. You know, I love you more than anything, and I would want to ask you if you'll marry me. And later, my blood pressures come down, my resting heartbeats come down. Can winning the lottery extend your life? It was getting where I knew it was time to retire. At night, Go for it. Well, for the searching TV. The 
17th annual Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards, honoring Danielle Brooks, Halle Bailey, Hechi Okoro Carroll, and Katherine Busby, hosted by Cliff Method Man Smith. Friday, 9, 8 central. In 2008, the Owens hit it big in Idaho's million dollar raffle. They plunked down most of their winnings into that one place. Now a Buell barbecue mainstay. Son Gage and girlfriend Delaney have dreams of franchising and building the business. But today, Gage has something more immediate in his sights. Are you ready to go yet? I seriously cannot wait another minute. Little does Delaney know that an engagement is in the works, complete with a helicopter proposal. I'm definitely ready to propose to Delaney. She thinks we're going to be looking at scenery, but what's really going to happen is I'm, I'm going to propose to her midway through the flight. If she does say yes, we're, we're planning on a, a party at the restaurant afterwards. What are you even doing? Nothing. Just hanging out. She's always like, what, what, what's going on? What's going on? Always asking me and saying there's something, there's something going on. So it's definitely been, been tough to keep it a secret. Come on, let's go, man. Let's go. Come on. Hurry. I'm Travis. Delaney. Delaney. Gage. Gage. Nice to meet you. Yep. Nice to meet you. Ready to go for a nice helicopter ride? Yeah, we're yep. ready. Recently, I have taken up a liking to helicopters. I haven't been in one yet, so obviously it'll be really exciting. I'm definitely excited, but nervous also. As Gage and Delaney tour Idaho skies, Kathy and Greg are on the ground to arrange a blowout surprise engagement party at the family restaurant at the cost of $1,000. They get their choice of two sides, but the steak and shrimp, they get a choice of baked potato or salad. We still need to get the rest of the appetizers done. We need to get everything into the banquet room, get set up. Actually, still a lot that needs to go on here in the next 45 minutes. It's ticking away. The countdown has begun. Before they get back from their helicopter ride, we have flowers to set up, cake. We have a live band coming in that we need to get set up. Uh, we got somebody making the hors d'oeuvres right now. Uh, Tri-tips all done, ribs are done. So we are really close. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. I'm glad you guys came. Good. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Delaney's mother and Delaney's sister and nephews just showed up. and. We got to tell them that, that Gage is actually going to pop the question to her on the, on the helicopter. Gage called me yesterday, and the only thing I could think to say is, wow. This is uh, Shoshone Falls. It's uh, called the Bagger of the West. If she says yes, I, I will definitely be very, very, very happy. She's definitely my future, and I don't know what would go through my mind if she said no. Delaney. Oh. <laughs> You know, I love you more than anything, and I would do anything for you. And I just want you to, to be with me forever. I want to ask you if you'll marry me. Yes? No? Yes. <laughs> Probably the best helicopter ride ever. <laughs> The newly engaged couple make their first of many happy calls. Hello? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> she said yes, so. You guys coming back? We'll stop by there, okay? All right, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'm happy to have Delaney be a part of our family. She's a great gal, and I think Gage made an awesome choice. Glad you said yes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited. I want to see their faces when they walk in. It's going to be great.
There's definitely a big, big weight lift that I'm very excited. I feel, feel great right now, actually. I'm on a very good track to building a wonderful future with someone who I'm in love with, so Kathy and Greg winning the lottery definitely changed my life for the better. Hey, you gotta show your sister the ring. <laughs> Now that the band's here, we're gonna move from uh, the banquet room to out here. We're gonna have a real party now. Winning the lottery, I think, actually, in, in a way, brought Gage and Delaney together because I don't think she would have actually moved here if she didn't have a job. I think her knowing that she's supporting herself brought her here and brought those two together. Thank you so much for everything that you bring to my life. and You seriously have made my life so much better. Coming up, money's no object for this millionaire adventure nut. This boat here, it is going to sell for $64,988. Man, yeah, we're getting in my category. <laughs> Down. On heart disease, nearly a flower, or a single thing. But life hasn't always been so carefree. And won a place in history when. I'm Ken Colbert, and I won $2.785 million in the Idaho Wild Card Lottery. In June 2007, Ken won a place in history when he became the largest ever wild card winner. With his winnings, Ken bought himself a treasure trove of toys so he can enjoy the love of his life, the great outdoors. But life hasn't always been so carefree. As a commercial trailer salesman, Ken was constantly on the road. I used to travel about approximately two weeks a month. I covered five states, two Canadian provinces. Ken was passing through the nation's wide open spaces that he loved without the chance to enjoy them. With big dreams on his mind, Ken always made sure he bought lottery tickets. We're at the uh, tea box convenience store in Pocatello, Idaho. After a long day, I would stop by here and fill up my truck with gas, and then I would uh, usually buy a six pack of beer and lottery tickets comes in and always buys his tickets here. Yeah. How about a $2 wild card, please? Okay. Let's get lucky again. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Finally, in June 2007, this store sold Ken the winning ticket. My blood pressure went up a little. My heartbeat went up a little. I went to the refrigerator, got a beer, and headed outside to the shade tree to set and medicate for a while. Ken had won $2.78 million, making him the largest wild card winner in history. No more cheap motel rooms, no more restaurants. After taxes, Ken took home $1.87 million. At the age of 59, he knew it was time to retire. It was getting where my playtime was interfering with work time, so I knew it was time to retire. If I want to get up at 6 o'clock and go play golf somewhere, I can do it. I have no alarm clocks whatsoever. And that playtime meant getting to enjoy the great outdoors with the toys he bought to take him there. This Ford F-350 cost me $51,000. And then I also bought this camper to go on the back of it. And then I added some nice things to it, like the television, the air conditioning, the gen set. And so that took it up to $30,000 real quick. It's like a home on wheels, basically. And when Ken really wants to get off the beaten path, he hops on his ATV. This is a Polaris uh, 800. It's one of the bigger ATVs they make. I bought it to uh, plow snow with and to ride the recreational trails here in Idaho. This beast uh, with the blade and everything was included, came out about $11,000. It's just a great, great toy, and I never would have been able to afford this without winning the lottery. But there is one toy Ken has been eyeing since the win. I want a boat that I can uh, run in about six inches of water on some of these rivers around here and fish for big trout. Then in the fall, I can take it and go duck hunting, goose hunting. How are you doing today? Welcome to Parkway RV. I'm looking for a new river boat. And with a millionaire's budget, there's no limit to what he can afford. Let's take a look at this boat here. Uh, this boat is perfect for the smaller rivers and uh, lakes around here. Yeah, sure. With the motors the way it sits right now, um, you're going to be right about 34,988. You know, I like this boat, but it just doesn't have the appeal. It's just something right here gets me. Jake has one more boat to show, and he thinks it may be exactly what Ken is looking for. 
This right here is a 2009 Denali by Thunderjet. You'll see the black part here, has, that's the bulletproof bottom. So it doesn't matter where you go on the river, you can bump off rocks, it's not gonna hurt this boat. I like this, what's the price tag on this one? This boat here runs for $39.99. Oh man, we're, yeah, we're getting in my category. You know, I really like the Denali. That, that's a great boat out there, it really is. But where I won the lottery, I think I'm gonna buy a brand new boat. There's no end to Ken's love of the outdoors. When he's not hunting birds on the water, he's shooting clay pigeons at the range. It's a hobby that costs him $3,000 a year, and that doesn't include the price of his shotgun. Oh! This particular gun, this Beretta 862, uh, retails for about $4,000. Oh! He's got better guns, <laughs> paid my money for them, yeah. still can't shoot any better. See, right. it's not the gun. <laughs> yeah. It's the guy behind it. And the guy behind the 862 is a straight shooter. Oh! At least when it comes to his friends. He's always been a great guy, and, and he always will be. People out here, most of them don't even know he won the lottery. It hasn't changed him a bit. It has changed in some ways, though. Since the win, Ken has the spare cash to treat his friends to a round or two of golf. It's really nice after you've won the lottery because you can treat your friends to something like this. It'll be $320 on your bill. All right, sounds good, man. Right. Thank you. OK. OK, who's going diving in the river when this goes in? If you Ken's swing may need a little help, but when it comes to helping others, he's a pro. See, he keeps me around, so he can beat me all the time. We're going to get him a golf school gift certificate. Yeah. Ken donated about $11,000 for my son Abe's college tuition. So I set up a scholarship for him in the name of Wildcard and uh, helped him through the last three years. He just took it up on himself. And that was really special. It really meant a lot. All right, to the 19th hole, group. With his winnings, Ken will finally be able to cross off one of the top trips on his bucket list at a cost of 20,000 times two. They picked two people at the whole golf course that they wanted to show up at Pebble Beach to make Pebble Beach look good. Yeah. Bob Saban and myself. So, so it only cost us $20,000 each, but we're going. Yeah, we're going. One of the two things you just said are true. <laughs> if I hadn't won the lottery, I wouldn't be here with my friends playing golf. I would be on that interstate probably headed home right now from a long day of sales prospecting, and I would be dead tired and going to bed by 10 o'clock at night. Since winning the lottery, my uh, blood pressure's come down, my resting heartbeat's come down, my attitude about life has went up. <laughs> I enjoy Monday morning, Sal. So. Bingo, hole in one. <laughs>